Hi, this is a short video on how I'm converting a, an Harbor Freight 20 ton Arbor Press so that it can be dual purpose to also be a rack and cloth cider press. What you see in front of me now is the 20 ton Arbor Press just as you get it. I have a more complicated design in mind, but this is what I'm going to show you is the simplest thing you can do to start using your 20 ton Arbor Press to make cider. So I'm going to step into the frame and run you through it very, very quickly. Hi, I'm Al Yelpington and this is going to be my cider press. Really quickly, the 20 ton jack on the top has 5 and 3 quarter inches of throw. This is important because the method of making this fit, as you keep pressing, is to use wooden blocks. The first blocks I'm going to put in there need to get past the press pin. So these are about 8x8 eight eight blocks, but once you get past the press pin, the most you're going to be able to put in there are probably 4x4s four because a 6 inch block is not going to fit in a 5 and 3 quarter inch gap. So I wanted to make sure you caught that. Okay, it's a mixture of build and buy. Build. The first thing you need to do is you need to build a a tray support that can handle the 20 tons of weight. What I did is got one sheet of three-quarter ply and I built the trays that I needed. Now this is the bottom tray, okay? The bottom tray, the wood is cut to be 22 inches wide by 26 inches long. I have two sheets and they're sandwiched together with a small cutout that is five and a half inches by three and a half inches and that handles the drain. What makes this thing work is that underneath it I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five pieces of unistrut equally spaced on the bottom. I have hand head bolts going through to the clips holding the unistrut in place. The unistrut is what gives the, keeps it from warping at all. That's really important. You don't want to warp. So the unistrut you notice is like one inch shorter around. So instead of 26 inches, they're 24 inches, which is good. It comes in 10 foot lengths. You'll get more out of it because you're cutting on the two foot marks. This one, you have to make it a little short. I recommend you use a sawzall for cutting it. You'll waste your life trying to cut it with a hacksaw, but you can't. Okay, that's the bottom tray. That is something that you build. Now, I'm probably going to anchor this later. That's up to you. Next thing you need is the press tray. This is something you buy. Buy it from good nature. It is the press tray for the road cider, cider press, okay? It comes with the drain already installed. It's not my favorite drain. It works. See the little cutouts? The tray is just a skosh wider than the uprights on the arbor. But you know what? That's not bad because take a look. That keeps the tray from shifting. So I call it a feature. It's a feature, okay? So the next thing that goes in there, you bought it. You can also buy this from Scienceware on the internet. It's www.bellart.com and um, the dimensions of the tray, outside dimensions are 24 inches by just a little bit over 28 inches and I'd say it's about 5 inches deep, okay? It's bellarts.com. Um, I think you're going to pay the same plus then you got to go out and buy your own tray. I just say give the money to good nature. The next thing you're going to want to buy is you want to buy your racks. All right, You can make them out of wood. It's very time consuming. I didn't do it. These are the trays from the road cider, again, from goodnature.com. And they fit right in here just like they're supposed to. The next thing you want to buy or you can build are your rack cloths. This is a heavy rack cloth from Good Nature. You can also get light web cloths 
I mean, on rat floss from other people. Um, I haven't tested them yet. I have no opinion. These are a lot like sunshade material, and some people say it works well. I don't know, but you're going to want to buy it. Um, the next thing you're going to build is the top tray. Now, the top tray is, again, sandwich two by four, uh, sandwich three quarter inch plywood, reinforced by five pieces of Unistrut. Hey, in special, special. I've got an overlay of high-density polyethylene plastic from U.S. Plastics. It's one quarter inch thick. I only use, I use less than half the sheet, held in place by uh, plastic hardware that I got from Home Depot. Um, the wood, we're going to put the tape measure, I'm sorry, see you watch me put it in the wood is 20 inches by 20 inches. That's really important because it's got to fit inside of the press tray but overlap the uh, rack. The plastic, however, is 20 and a half by 20 and a half. You want an overlap there to keep juice from touching, you know, minimize it, the wood. All right. I also datum with my circular saw very carefully. I scored the top wood surface. I did that for two reasons. Uh, I'm hoping it lets juice escape, and I'm also hoping that it minimizes slipping of the top um, cheese. So anyway, this we go in there. Hey, looky, looky, that fits in there. And then you can block it. Now, I don't have my jack all the way down, but you can block it. And then each time you put it down and you start pressing your cheeses down, release the jack, bring it back up, stick a 4x4 four four in there, and you just keep alternate blocking. It's very old school. There's videos on YouTube about doing that. Um, that's it in a nutshell. Buy the tray, buy the racks, buy the rack cloths. Build the bottom support, build the press tray, use the rack the way it came. Hey, happy cider. Hope you all enjoy it. Thank you.